Well, happy Saturday, streakers. Your Saturday is hopefully going like my Saturday, which, well, maybe not like my Saturday. We just absolutely had a fantastic time shaving the dog. That's right. We had to groom the dog. The dog will no longer be accepted at any groomers. He's too old. And so we took four hours, gave him a really nice bath, coddled him, make sure that he was taken care of. And then we pulled out the clippers and went to town, getting all the fur off. He's a toy poodle, so he's a little tiny dog, and had a lot of fur, which we were able to get rid of. He now looks very much shaved, and I think he'll be a little bit more, oh, a little happier. Now, we are in no way professional dog groomers, but we had a good time doing it, and I think he's okay. I think he's, he's no worse for the wear. We, uh, Jamie was able to get a pair of dog clippers online and then we got these special scissors and very, the dog at PetSmart went and got the dog shampoo and the dog conditioner and took care of the dog. So that's what my Saturday has been like. Hopefully your Saturday has been either bat better or even much better. A couple of our neighbors were headed out to the amusement park. I guess they're doing the fright night there, which is a lot of fun. What I wanted to talk to you about, though, is Jamie, who was on with me yesterday. Wasn't it great to have her? I love when she can come on. She's got a lot going on, very busy. But when she can join us, it is enjoyable. Some of the phrases and memorable moments that she comes up with in the heat of the conversation are fantastic. Like yesterday's, success in the mess. That was a, that was a great one. I'm just going to remember that one forever. Now, she sent me a link to an article that she gave me a little bit of background on, but she said I would really like it. And she got it from one of our streakers out there. So if you sent it to her, thank you very much. What I thought I would do is this is an article out of the Wall Street Journal. I haven't read it yet. I just barely clicked it open. I'm going to read it with you for the first time and I'll read it aloud as I'm doing that. I'll probably interject some comments as we go along. This article, is called The Power of Your Exercise Mindset. Research, research shows that shaming or scaring yourself into hitting the gym isn't nearly as effective as finding a physical activity you actually enjoy. That was the subtitle to The Power of Your Exercise Mindset. This is by Jenny, oh, I'm gonna go with Tats, T-A-I-T-Z, Tats. And it's written October 13th, 2023, published at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So this was just last night. Okay, you ready? Here we go. If exercise seems like a great idea, but you can never keep up a routine, it's worth considering your exercise, quote, mindset. Defined by psychologists as core assumptions that shape our behavior and reality, while it's long been known that mindsets can make a big difference in academic performance and navigating stress, Evidence is mounting that targeting some of our most ingrained habitual beliefs and replacing them with more adaptive ones can rev up our ability to keep ourselves healthy. Now, if you've been around me for any amount of time or if you've listened to any of the streaking podcast, you know my, the hair on the back of my neck just stands straight up when habit is mentioned in any form. In this one, interestingly, habitual beliefs and replacing them I actually agree with the way that they used the word. That's fantastic because habitual beliefs means automatic responses, automatic beliefs may need to replace them with some more adaptive ones, which I agree streaking is all about. Again, I'm giving you my first thoughts and impressions as I read this with you. Quote, whether they're true or false, mindsets have an impact, says Dr. Aliyah Crum, who runs the Stanford Mind and Body Lab. Quote, they change what we pay attention to, what we're motivated to do, how we feel emotionally about what we're doing and what we decide to prioritize. Now, that was the end of the quote. Continuing on, though, with the article. For instance, maybe you've tried to shame or scare yourself into going to the gym by recounting the health risks of not moving. Or perhaps you've aimed to get active by thinking of the long-term upsides of exercise. In addition to promoting longevity, exercising regularly is 1.5 times more effective than medication for easing mild to moderate depression, stress, and anxiety. If you have ever had a reason to exercise, this is probably a great one. Now, I'm, I'm not quoting anymore. I'm actually giving my interjection here. 
1.5 times more effective than medication for easing mild and moderate depression. Love that stat. And in fact, have felt in my life when I've had a little bit of that depression come on, that getting out the streak of run or walk at least one mile every day, complete at least 10 push-ups a day, plank at least once a day, all of those have helped raise my mental state. Sometimes not a lot, but maybe just a little bit. And what I love here is the whole idea of regular, what did it say? For instance, maybe try to shame yourself, shame yourselves. Perhaps you've aimed to get active by thinking for the long-term upsides of exercise. I look at all of the long-term exercise, the long-term benefits of exercise come because you've decided to be consistent in it. Now, I'm curious to see if they say anything about that. You ready? Here we go. Back to the article. Yet, when it comes to exercise, reminding ourselves that something is good for us isn't always enough to get us to comply. That may be why fewer than 28% of Americans meet the exercise guidelines set by the Centers for Disease Control and, Preve and Prevention, the CDC, which call for 150 minutes of physical activity every week. 150 minutes. Well, that's kind of interesting to think about. So we'll keep going here for a second. While the intention of publishing more stringent exercise guidelines is to encourage people to be more active, they have a tendency to backfire. Quote, we have evidence showing that the whole intention of these higher guidelines is to motivate people to meet them, but it's actually having the opposite effect, according to Crum. One study found that college students and university staff who received more flexible exercise recommendations were significantly more inclined to increase their physical activity. Whoa, back the truck up. So laughably simple. Making it laughably simple actually gets you more down the way. Scientific proof. Law number one of streaking. Make the streak laughably simple. Run or walk at least a mile every day. Or if that's not simple enough, then do one that is simple. Half a mile. You will find that you will not only get energized from that, oftentimes you'll do more because it's so engaging and you've given yourself permission to win right out of the chute. Whereas the CDC here said, oh no, we're going to up the standard. And I think what happens as I look at this 150 minutes, what happens with everyone is the idea that, well, if I can't get 150 minutes, I may as well do nothing at all. I don't know where that logic comes from with all of us. It does happen every single time. Whenever I think I need to up my intensity, increase the amount of time, whatever that does to the brain, it always says, no, that's just, I can't do that. I'm not going to do it. So that is really interesting. What inspires us, back to the article, what inspires exercise motivation, explains Crum, a former NCAA Division I athlete, are your beliefs about whether you're doing, what you're doing is adequate and how you view the process of exercise. Do you think of it as fun and social or boring and painful? In a landmark study in 2007, okay, I'm, I'm, now I'm interested, landmark study. Okay, Crum experimented with the power of mindset on a group of hotel room attendants who spent their days vacuuming and changing sheets but didn't necessarily consider themselves active. When researchers congratulated half the group for not only meeting but exceeding the Surgeon General's recommendations for an active lifestyle, a month later, that group showed a decrease in blood pressure and weight compared with a control group who didn't receive positive encouragement. That I would say that is absolutely landmark. You were doing your job and you were praised for doing your job, saying that you were active, and now you're even more active. That's, I, I mean, just think about that for a second. Think about that in the terms of having an act, a, a simple, laughably simple streak that you do every single day. And when you do it, you're active every day and getting praise and encouragement, the win cycle for that, it's just amazing. Of course, back to the article, perception alone isn't everything. Quote, be aware of your mindset, then work to change that to a more adaptive way of thinking in addition to doing activity, advises Crum. A study she co-authored with Dr. Octavia Zart involving more than 61,000 Americans found that regardless of how much exercise people got, 
those who perceived themselves as less active than their peers were significantly more likely to die than those who thought they were more active. Quote, when people tell people, when we tell people, hey, you're doing a lot right now, that motivates them to do more, Crumb said. Wow. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm blown away by what is actually being communicated here. Be aware of your mindset, then work to change that to a more adaptive way of thinking. This is the crux of streaking. The whole idea is to employ the displacement theory in your life, which is you're not going to get rid of bad or less valuable activities by trying to just take them out. The way that you get value, the way you change your mindset is by setting a streak that is in line with something you want to do or become, and then doing that streak every single day. And when you do that, when you have read at least a paragraph, walk at least a mile or run at least a mile. As you have that in there, that will that will deplay, displace what is less valuable activity, no matter what, and your mindset will change. One of the things that Jamie says quite often as we talk about this is she says, streaking for me is all about mindset. What it does is put place in my mind for this activity to exist and exist in such a simple way that I can do it no matter how tired I am, no matter how sick I am, no matter what state or condition I may be in, I have the mental fortitude to do that simple thing. Hey, you're doing a lot right now. That motivates you to do more. When you are doing a streak every single day, that momentum keeps you going. Okay, here's continue on with the article. In contrast, Thinking about exercise in all or nothing terms, I need at least 30 minutes or there's no point, is the enemy of consistency. Okay, I'm geeking out right now. In contrast, thinking about all exercise in all or nothing terms, which is a lot of people. In fact, many of the people who I talk to are just like, yeah, that's small and simple thing. That won't work for me. Well, guess what? All or nothing terms, I need at least 30 minutes or there's no point. And by the way, this is the other thing that I look at and would just ask all of you to consider is don't measure your streaks by time. Measure them by activity. I'm going to get out there and walk at least a half a mile or around the block, at least around the block every single day. Or I'm going to run or ride a bike or I'm going to break a sweat at least one time every day. Any of those things are much better than ever looking at the time that it takes to do the streak, no matter what. Uh, th this is this is probably one of the favorite quotes that I've ever read in any article. In contrast, thinking about exercise in all or nothing terms, I need at least 30 minutes or there's no point, is the enemy of consistency. You want to adopt the mindset, I'm on with the article, that any and all movement is worth it and everything counts, says Dr. Michael Sager, a, a sustainable change researcher at the University of Michigan and the author of The Joy Choice, how to finally achieve lasting changes in eating and exercise. Yeah, it's called a streak. Streaking it, make it laughably simple. Record that you did it. Share it in a community. That is how you change your mindset. That is how you move forward. Even a quick walk in the middle of a hectic day is a deposit toward your well-being. If that doesn't resonate with your perfectionist tendencies, consider whether those tendencies have worked for you. Though rigid standards may help some people for many others, they backfire, creating a vicious cycle of failure. Now, some of you may be saying, well, Jeff, isn't a streak a vicious, uh, a, rigid, a rigid standard? And I would say to you, the consistency of the streak may be a little bit rigid. However, the simplicity of the streak, the laughably simple activity that you do, I'm going to go on a walk around the block at least one time every day, that is joyful. That is happy. That is the way to make it happen. Because honestly, if you don't have some type of consecutive consistency, it's not going to happen anyway. And I love this question. Consider your perfectionist ways. How's that been working out for you? Has it been working out for you? Uh, you might, maybe not. Maybe you ought to try something a little bit different, which can perpetuate. So rather than seeing workouts as a way to burn calories or lose weight, which can perpetuate self-criticism, Here's another thing that I talked about yesterday and the day before I was talking with Jamie. This whole idea of embracing failure. False. 
don't do it. Embrace success. Embrace the opportunity to win and to have these successes every single day where you're encouraged. <laughs> because, and I apologize, I'm probably overselling this. This is one of the things where I have to really be careful because my passion gas, I, one of, Chris McChesney, as I was working with him, he's the author of The Four Disciplines of Execution. He and I were talking once and he said, Jeff, you don't ever need to step on the passion gas. Just don't do it. In fact, you probably need to ride the brake. So I'm sorry if I'm overselling this. I won't do it as much anymore. I promise. I won't go into the passion gas. Okay, so lose weight, which can perpetuate self-criticism. It can help to focus on more immediately gratifying reasons. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Besides bringing generosity and flexibility to how you view your movement, changing your why for getting active can also help sustain your motivation. Rather than seeing workouts as a way to burn calories or lose weight, which can perpetuate self-criticism, it can help to focus on a more immediately gratifying reasons to do it, like clearing your mind or feeling less stressed, according to Seeger. Approaching the process of exercise as something that's appealing and even indulgent makes a difference. The key, says researchers, is to focus on the pleasure that exercise can bring. Then pick an activity that is actually rewarding. Quote, people tend to say that health is their primary motivator for exercise. But that's actually a poor driver of lasting motivation, says Seeger, who found that changing her mindset helped her to keep her up her running routine in all sorts of weather. <laughs> you guys know I got to pause on this one. You have a, I'll tell you what, you have a streak that's eight years old and you're going to run in whatever weather there is out there because the, the game is fun. I agree with what is being said here that when we change our mindset to something that's appealing, such as keeping the streak alive, I'm not saying that my my runs are, they're, they hurt. They're, there's pain that's involved. I often feel like a two-year-old when I start running in the morning because my body is just throwing a temper tantrum about being out there and whatever the weather is. But what she's saying here, her mindset helped her to keep her running routine in all sorts of weather. Instead of feeling annoyed when it began to pour when I was running, I got curious about what it would be like to move in the rain, she explains. That helped her savor the experience. Framing exercise as appealing even helps to motivate people who might find physical activity painful. <laughs> I, I promise I did not read this beforehand. It's just what comes to brain as I'm reading it. Such as those with osteoarthritis in the knees. Richard Bernstein, a Michigan Supreme Court justice, was born blind and lives with ongoing chronic pain after a serious accident. Yet, he has completed 25 marathons and an Ironman triathlon. If you are a novice to Ironman triathlon, that is two and a little of two miles and a little of swimming. That's a uh, hundred and what is it? 120 of biking, 120 miles, somewhere in there. And then a full marathon, 26.2 on the Ironman. Even with a notably demanding work schedule. When asked how he does it, he acknowledges that it all began by changing his mindset. Quote, I always had a view that athletics was something I would never be able to do. It was for the cool kids. It was for the leaders, he said, describing the feeling sidelined during grade school physical education classes. Then he was invited to join a meetup with Achilles International, an organization that empowers people with disabilities to participate in athletic opportunities. At first, he doubted whether this was something he was physically capable of. But the nonprofit's founder, Dr. Dick Trom, assured him that, quote, this is totally something you could do. As Bernstein found joy in running with others, his miles slowly mounted, and he fell into marathon training, which sparked a drive to do even more. Reaching a fitness goal was the last thing on my mind, he says. Exercise became associated with the delight of being outdoors and the camaraderie of others. And he's found that the process sparks a cycle of flourishing. Quote, athletics is almost spiritual in a way. It allows you to be strong. It allows you to push forward. It allows you to find that inner strength. The more I move, the better I actually feel. 
Jenny Tatz is a clinical psychologist and assistant clinical professor in psychiatry at the University of California, Los Angeles. Her forthcoming book is Stress Resets, How to Soothe Your Body and Mind in Minutes. So there you go. Appeared in the October 14th, 2023 print edition as The Power of Your Exercise Mindset. Okay, that was the entire article ending with, you know, the more I move, the better I actually feel. I'm just, I'm going to click on the conversation here. I want to, I want to just see what the conversation says. So we've got Kevin H responding seven hours ago. I find that there's actually some comfort in, ex in an exercise routine. When you figure out what works for you and make it a part of your daily wellness routine. Hey, did you hear that? Daily? I'm telling you a streak, a daily streak, a weekly streak. That is what is born out of a streak. Routines are born out of a streak. Goals are reached uh, by heading to a streak. It is, it is all about the streak when you're trying to, to really accomplish these things. It's don't let's see here. It says you make it a part of your daily wellness routine. You don't need to spend as much time obsessing about it. This is one of the things we talk about in a streak. You don't really start thinking about uh, if I should do it. You just think about when in the day I should do it. Among other things, I cycle, hike, mountain bike, run, trail run, backcountry ski, hit the gym, and so on. The variety pro provides different benefits and keeps it from getting boring. So verifying the intensity helps with the mindset too and provides different types of mental stimulus. And it goes on. I think, wow, he's <clears throat> he's got quite a lot here. Gladys Griffin uh, quotes the athletics is, the, is almost spiritual in a way. It allows you to be strong. It allows you to push forward. And Gladys says, spot on. The process of exercise was ingrained into my life and lifestyle as a child. Mind, body, spirit, faith that has served me well. Exercise is the connective tissue along with diet and not overeating to effectively navigate life demands. When bus travel and life schedules were too consuming to get to the gym, 10 to 15 minutes of calisthenics and ample water daily, and she has capitals, D-A-I-L-Y, daily, were great. Great article. Again, set a streak. Okay, I'm going to just scroll down. I'm going to go, because there's several comments here. I'm, I'm like burning to some of the ones that aren't at the top. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, this is Michael, and he says, probably if your day isn't hectic, you aren't putting out. Interesting. <laughs> Even if a quick walk in the middle of, the, of a hectic day is deposit towards your well-being. Set a goal. Get a program to achieve the goal. Follow the program. Achieve physical superiority. Interestingly enough, here's what I found about a goal. A goal has the same impact on you as setting, I'm going to set a goal for 30 minutes of exercise. It, it creates this all or nothing mindset. And when you have an all or nothing mindset, that then sets you back. What you want to do is set a floor of success. I'm going to make this laughably simple and I'm going to do it every day. That floor of success then allows you to build, to build toward who you want to be. Uh, let's just do one more here. <laughs> okay. William says this, most of these columns are wordy meditations on the bleeding obvious. Maybe I'm lucky, was born with the right mindset, so I haven't stopped running, rowing, swimming, cycling in over 50 years since school. As natural as breathing, now run three times a day, every day, mostly hills and core workout. I'm William, Mr. Intensity. Track most of it on Strava. Interesting to see how performance it varies. Love it. Engaging nature and people, especially around dawn. And I'm now conscious of how it clarifies, stimulates thought, and whatever the current issue. <laughs> then Albert responds to him. You certainly are lucky. It's painfully hard for some people to change their mindset. I've always felt that working out is both hard, a hard habit to get into. It's not a habit, people. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's not, will never be. A habit is something you do automatically without thinking this is never, ever going to be a habit. Uh, I guess I'm lucky too, he says, because he says a habit to get into and a hard habit to get out of. D false. Absolutely false, Albert. It may be for you, but false. You can break an exercise habit instantaneously simply because it's never automatic. So when you're talking about breaking a habit, it's never automatic. I'm lucky too, and that it becomes a habit for me. You're right. You are lucky. Most of the people on the face of the earth do not have something that is automatic. It's like, hey, I'm just going to get out there. Never have I woken up in the middle of a run and thought, when did this happen? When did I start getting here? 
if you are intentional and deliberate, what you're saying is I am going to do this and I'm going to set a streak, set up the floor of my success and move forward with it. Well, enough with those comments. Hopefully you've enjoyed the opportunity to read this article with me when it's as I read it. A couple of fantastic quotes in there. My favorite, in contrast, thinking about exercise in all or nothing terms, I need at least 30 minutes or there's no point, is the enemy of consistency. Streaking is your friend. You want to learn more about it? Hit the bookstore, Barnes & Noble, or go online at Amazon and order the streaking book. You can also download it as an ebook and also as Audible. If you really want to see what streaking is happening, get into the app, share the app with your friends. All of you start a challenge streak together. By the way, a little, little uh, up and coming. We've got challenge streaks that are soon going to be hitting the app, which is going to be fantastic. And we've got a really fantastic upgrade that's coming very soon. The streaks page has been re reimagined uh, in a really fun and fantastic way. Posts and feeds are better than they've ever been. There's all kinds of great things that are coming, coming out. So that's download the streaking app, get on, get with your friends, create a community with your friends, and start streaking together. You just like what happened here with the judge. That was another thing. Did you notice that when I started going out with friends, it was really a lot more fun. Uh, it was what did he say? That was the other one. Approaching the process of exercise. Let's see. He was invited to join a meetup with Achilles International, an organization that empowers people with disabilities and participate in athletic opportunities. He doubted it at first. Then Bernstein found joy in running with others. His miles slowly mounted. You see, this is what it's all about, streaking with friends. It's so much more fun. Anyway, gone on too long, got a little bit too passionate. However, hopefully you feel how significant it really has been for me in my life and thousands of other people's lives. Get on the streaking app. Start streaking today. Until we talk tomorrow, keep streaking.